so uh, swami ji what exactly is spirituality how is it different from science can we ever study what is spiritual through a scientific process let me give the answer from a vedantic perspective what is spirituality spirituality is um overcoming the ignorance about ourselves if i am that one non dual consciousness but i don't see myself at all in that way i see myself as this guy this fellow uh, you know david chamus calls me the orange guy <laughs> so as this orange guy i am sarva priyananda the orange guy but this is wrong from an advaitic perspective this is ignorance avidya transcending this ignorance through knowledge and realizing what i am truly and then living it in life this is profound implications for life if i am that non dual consciousness can i die the body dies but can i die if i am immortal then what does it do for my fear of death if i am that one non dual consciousness and nothing is apart from me nobody is apart from me can i hate what will i hate it's it's uh, can you hate somebody in your dream when you wake up from a dream you had the experience of some nasty guys and some good people when you wake up do you hate those good people and do you hate uh, do you hate those nasty people and do you like those good people no they are all one with you i myself appear to me in those forms so who can hate or whom can you hate whom uh, can you be partial to they are all you one uh, sadhu put it very beautifully he said in in hindi i'll tell you in hindi and translate the consequence of this advaitic realization he says bodh mein ekta chit mein samata aur vyavahar mein asangata very beautifully put he says in our innermost understanding as consciousness we are all one not even a little bit different from each other we are one reality that's bodh in consciousness in mind in thinking samatvam comes that whatever happens in the world apparently uh, it is something is desirable for me something is undesirable something is pleasant something is unpleasant but underneath you find an equanimity that uh, that's a sign of maturity actually this equanimity which when it comes in life ups and downs in life you have equanimity and in day to day activity uh, with the body with other people with situations in life a detachment not lack of engagement fully engaged fully active the ideal of a karma yogi detached and yet intensely active that's what comes this is spirituality again from an advaitic perspective can it be investigated scientifically um, i don't see why not swami vivekananda said i am of the opinion that the claims of religion must be subjected to the same rigorous investigation as the claims of science are if by that way we find something is false it should be given up no matter how soothing and good it seems because ultimately if something is false it cannot be ultimately good but he says i am convinced that the claims of religion the truths of religion will withstand this scrutiny and he gives is a mysterious phrase he uses because he says religion has an internal mandate which science lacks now what is what did he mean by that internal mandate i with a with an advaitic bias i'm predisposed to think of it as this first person experience that i am obviously consciousness so this is the internal mandate all right let's take the next question thank you swamiji uh in oh, science just, by the way but if you want more practical uh, investigation not just big theoretical talk um the his holiness the dalai lama has engaged in uh, uh, a lot of di- discussions with neuroscientists especially and there have been studies on the effects of meditation many good papers have been published and work like that is going on our own dr ravindra has done work and many people i think in this institute itself have done and are doing work which uh, uses modern scientific methods rigorous studies um to uh, examine the claims of religion and the effects of various practices associated with religion certainly this investigation can be done and should be done oh, thank you swami ji uh, next question in science and medicine when a person's boundary of self and the world is dissolved we say it is a loss of reality and diagnose it as delusion hmm. but whereas the same thing is the core objective in spirituality hmm. and it is perceived as transition from the world of maya to absolute truth hmm. how do we reconcile these two it right be- so when you say i feel one with the universe uh, the, the secretary secretary will see a problem ye to gaya i remember in the dialogue between the religious leaders and the psychiatrists in washington dc from the religious side there were some objections one was don't categorize everything we do as abnormal this is our request to you <laughs> so yeah, that is a unfair accusation it's i mean many of the some of the psychiatrists themselves are uh, spiritual practitioners one he was uh, the dean of faculty in a very prominent uh, hospital in baltimore and he says I watch your Vedanta talks on YouTube and I have got so many questions. Uh so there is a serious engagement among many people. There is a skepticism also. 
Um, now, one thing is, even applying, uh, Freud was once asked, whatever we say, you are saying that it is abnormal. What is normality? Please define normality. And Freud's answer was very simple. He says the ability to love and the ability to do work, to function effectively and to relate with people, if you have that, you're normal. So, that is a very good answer. As long as one's oneness with, the, uh, with the everything, if that increases suffering, it, if that makes a person a pest, a nuisance, uh, so, uh, and it reduces functionality deeply, uh, and over sort of permanently, then it might be a problem. Otherwise, I don't think it's a problem. And often, you see in genuine mystical experiences, the person has a higher functionality. Some of the greatest, the, the builders of our civilizations across the world religions, they were mystics with such experiences. What Advaita claims is, that is not the goal. The goal is, you realize that and realize that it's a fact. Whether I have that experience or I do not have that experience, it's a fact right now, there's one consciousness shining forth as many. Now, with that understanding, and possibly with mystical experiences like that, you come back and relate with other people, you see, you're able to relate better, much better. Live a life, a much better life. Thank you, Swamiji. Uh, we have Kishore. I am Professor of Ayurveda in the in Institute. I uh, just wanted to know what... The, uh, uh, I was just wondering, how do we understand consciousness in uh, uh, as a terminology? Is it uh, in, in Sanskrit? Yes. Is it Chetana? Is it Purusha? Is mm. it what? So there are many words for consciousness. Consciousness is a broad and ambiguous term in English. And that's why it creates problems. Even in consciousness studies, in philosophy of mind, when they talk about mind and consciousness indistinguishably, uh, in, in uh, Indian terminology, in yoga, Ayurveda also, in Vedanta, we have so many words for this and with precise meanings. So consciousness, here the direct answer to your question is Chit, Chaitanya, Samvit. Uh, these are some of the words, which all of which denote pure consciousness, consciousness as such. Now, when consciousness or Purusha itself, in the Sankhyan term, Purusha itself, in that sense I am talking about consciousness. In Vedanta we talk about Sakshi, uh, pure consciousness as Sakshi. Um, and Atman, Brahman, again Atman is a broad term with many connotations. But Atman in its highest Vedantic sense, Brahman in its highest Vedantic sense, as Sat Chit Ananda, in that sense we are talking about consciousness. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Swamiji, my question is a little similar to this. So Tell yoga, us your name. Uh, my name is Aditi, I am a student here. I'm doing MSc yoga therapy. So. Yes. Uh, so in yoga, we talk about purusha and prakriti and how it forms our body mm -hmm. and how it forms how we look and how what we are. So is purusha and consciousness the same? Because we talk about multiple purushas, each one of us have yes. a purusha. And if not, then how does Vedanta tell about uh, the formation of body? Right. So purusha and prakriti, consciousness and matter, basically. So yoga, we must remember, yoga and sankhya are dualistic systems. So sankhya and yoga both stop at consciousness and the material world, which is pretty logical. I think that's, that's something that's pretty acceptable to everybody. Uh, uh, I am awareness. Who can deny that we are awareness? And I'm aware of a mind, and I'm aware of the body and the external universe. So mind, body, external universe, you can all lump it under matter, under uh, the material universe. We call it prakriti. That's why when... Uh, modern uh, materialist reductionist approach would say that mind is also matter. Um, yoga or Sankhya have no objection. Or Vedanta has no, Indian philosophy has no objection. Because according to Indian philosophy, mind is also matter. It's sukshma tanmatras are there and that's what becomes the mind. So, um, but Sankhya and Yoga stop there. And there the system is called Bahupurushavada. That means there are many consciousnesses. As many sentient beings here, so many consciousnesses. Because this is dualistic. Notice again, how the terminology creates a problem. In the Western philosophy also, uh, the, you know, the big problem is the mind-body dualism. Uh, the mind-body dualism. And you can attribute it to Descartes. Uh, so Descartes, Descartes is the one who investigated, um, you know, was trying to find a solid basis for knowledge. And in his uh, meditations, he comes across the, this famous formulation, cogito ergo sum, I think, therefore I am. But I am thinking, that means the mind. And the mind proves my own existence. So I am a mind and there is a body, mind-body dualism. But in Sankhya, in yoga, it's not mind-body dualism. Mind and body are part of the same system. Mind and mind is not the body. Uh, there is a difference, but they are both material, and they are all part of a material system, this entire universe. So if you affect the mind, the body will be affected. If you affect the body, influence the body, the mind will be affected. And perfectly acceptable in uh, yoga, in Ayurveda, in all the Indian systems. No problem at all there. The dualism which comes is a consciousness and not consciousness. Uh, chit, jada. 
Consciousness and object duality. And that's where yoga and Sankhya stops. Advaita asks the, just to answer your question, how is the body formed in Advaita? Advaita says we have given and outsourced it to Sankhya. The entire, <laughs> the entire Sankhya cosmology, Advaita accepts. Because Advaita has this thing about Vavaharika and Paramartika. Paramartika, Advaita is only interested in saying that there is one absolute reality. In the Vavaharika, transactional world, if you want to say body is produced in this way, in the, in the Sankhya and cosmology, perfectly all right. Advaita will give a blank check there. Um, yes. Interestingly, I, I remember I studied um, Descartes in the origin, not in the original French, in English translation. Very interesting. There, we often quote Cogito Argosum. But there's another place, just a little later, where he writes. He says, so I am, I exist. That I'm sure of. And what I know in this world outside, that I'm not totally sure of. And everything can be doubted, right? You can be in the Matrix movie, you could be dreaming. It could be a virtual reality. How do you know? But I exist, that cannot be doubted. I exist, that cannot be doubted. Um, then, a few lines below that, very poignantly, touchingly, he remarks, how strange it is that that which I am so sure of, I do not know anything about it. And that which I know so much about, I can never be sure of it. I know so much about this world. And that time itself, we know him as a mathematician. You know, we always study Cartesian coordinates in mathematics. Descartes. So I know so much about this world, but you can never be sure of it. How do you know it's not a dream? How do you know? On principle, you can never, you can never uh, say that uh, there is no way of verifying that this is an absolute reality outside. Um, whereas, I am totally sure that I exist. But what is that I exist? I have no idea. This is where Vedanta, why Vedanta? Sankhya also begins right here. We can investigate. See, this is another thing that I can, I can share with you. Um, Christoph Koch, I asked him a question when, upon the release of his book. It was an online event from Harvard Bookstore. So I asked him a question about the hard problem of consciousness and what, what do you think about it. And he was against this idea. He says, you can't do science like that. Uh, because if you say I'm pure consciousness and not an object, then what science will you do with that? If it's not an object. Well, we have to stretch the limits of science. To include that non-objective reality also. Uh, non-objective is a curse word in science. Uh, it's not object. So it's a curse word. You're, sub you're subjective. You're be objective. In Advaita Vedanta, objective is a curse word. <laughs> you see, this is the difference. World exists. Why? Because I'm seeing it. In Advaita Vedanta, world is false. Why? Because you're seeing it. <laughs> Jagat Mithya. <laughs> Drishyatvat. Because it's an appearance to consciousness. Who can deny the world is appearing to your consciousness? Descartes himself could not deny it. And what did Descartes say? That which I know, all this I know. The world, science, world, religion, science, all is in the world. I can never be sure of it. Yeah. And one thing that I know, I exist. That I'm sure of, but I don't know anything about it. Now, this I don't know anything about it. See, I'll just ask for your patience. What was the problem? See, Descartes' original pro uh, the project was... How can I uh, find a sure foundation for knowledge? So once, once he has found the sure foundation, my own existence, I think therefore I exist, then he goes outwards to establish, re-establish knowledge, knowledge of the e entire world. But he did not spend even one minute investigating that which he had found. I, the self, I, the, uh, what we call Atman, Sakshi, witness. He did not investigate any further. He just said, I can't know anything about it. And he let it go. But Advaita Vedanta uh, investigates it. Advaita Vedanta, Sankhya, Yoga, in fact, Nyaya, all the Indian philosophies, um, the Buddhist philosophies, the Jainas, all of their four, three, four, five thousand years of study is an investigation into that which Descartes found. And you can do it. So much literature has been generated for the three, four thousand years now. Why do you say that you cannot do philosophy of mind? Why do you say you cannot do science uh, on the, uh, about the Atman? You can do it. It's a different kind of science. It's a different kind of philosophical investigation. We have to expand the philosophy of mind. In fact, we should change the topic itself. Instead of philosophy of mind, we should call it philosophy of mind and consciousness. At least that much expansion we should do. Yes, good question. <laughs>